Daddy. Hello everyone, this is Emmond with Gamey Daddy and I'm here with another video from Tom Clancy's The Division. So you're wondering why you're staring at a blank spreadsheet. Well, I'm making this video because this is one of the requests from my subs on how to build a PC. So I made that video with three reasons why you should play The Division 2 on PC and somebody asked what they needed to buy, what they needed to use to build. So this is a video that's for people who are pretty much interested in moving to The Division on PC. Now I'm not saying PC is a better place to play The Division, even though a gaming computer has better performance than a console, it's just a matter of preference. If you're on the edge, you're thinking of doing it and you don't know what to do, or you're just interested in seeing what it will look like, well, go ahead and keep watching the video. So what I've done is I've taken the cost of, I've taken the price of the, co the computer that I'm actually recording this video on, and I've laid it side by side with the current market pricing as of today, June 25th, 2008. Uh, sorry, 18, 2008, 10 years ago. But what it is that I've tried to do is I've tried to show you what the price differences can look like. And if you're willing to shop and be very savvy with your money and buy used products, you're going to be able to get a good deal. Now, sometimes a new item and a used item may be very similar in price. So there's going to be a five, 10, maybe $15 difference that you, you're able to spend. Now, also another thing is these are prices available in the United States. Some places around the world, PC components are very expensive, while some places around the world, PC components are not as expensive. You know, like you have different brands that you, that are available to you here in the US, whereas in places like in Asia, you have a lot more diverse, you know, brands. EVG and all these other brands that we use here are probably not brands that are gonna be available to you there. They're gonna be available, but you're gonna find a huge amount and a huge plethora of, you know, component makers that you're able to choose from and not break bank just depends on where you are so what have i done i've put together a spreadsheet that shows my pc as of when i built it and the current pricing for today now my pc is what you're probably going to put on a mid weird range you put it on a mid range uh, of PCs because I didn't pretty much upgrade all my components to be high end components because most of the stuff here I kind of got it. So what I'm going to show you today is I'll show you these are the components that you need in order to build yourself a gaming PC. These are the components that I have for the current PC that I'm using. And this is the price that I paid for all the components. This is the price of, for which you can actually get them today. And then I'm going to show you how to actually save money by buying other components that will perform just as good as some of the other components here for way less okay so this video is probably gonna have a few parts so the first part we're gonna go through all the items that I have so I also made a key on this spreadsheet and I'm gonna share it with you now the, the key is everything that's green here you can purchase on B&H videophoto.com I don't have an affiliate link with them but I know that they've given me some good prices on some of the things that I've actually bought and then if it's blue, you can buy on eBay. And then if it's yellow, it's a standalone item. So even if you can buy it on, you can buy it anywhere. You can buy it at a garage sale. Um, you can also buy something like this at a garage sale. Don't get me wrong, but these are the prices I got from these places. So all these items you can buy on a garage sale, but you got to understand that the yellow ones are standalone. And if I mark the purple, then it needs to be compatible with one or two other components, even three other components within your PC. So you can't just go ahead and buy so if you look at this processor, motherboard and RAM, they all have to be compatible. So you can't just go buy a processor from, uh, you know, from some random place and then buy a random motherboard and then buy a random, uh, you know, random memory sticks. They have to be compatible and they follow certain rules. So that's why I mark them that way. So you got to make sure that you, you follow compatibility when it's when you're buying these items. I think an, a case as well. I also put a case as compatibility because there are different sizes of motherboards that are for different sizes, different kinds of cases. There are cases that can take what we call the full ATX or the max ATX, the tower size or whatever it is, that's super big. And then there's the micro ATX, which is a smaller motherboard. And then there's a mini ITX, which is very small. And so there are cases for all of those. And so those, when you're buying a com or trying to build a computer, you have to consider the compatibility of the case with the different kinds of motherboards that they can take. A, a case that, that's designed for mini ITX cannot take a micro ATX board or a full ATX board. So those are some of the things that you're gonna research. So let's look at prices. First, my Intel i5-6500, this was a first time build. So I paid full price for this, it was $203 KB Lake. 
And when you buy a processor, you have to buy a motherboard that actually is compatible with it. And then you have to buy a RAM that's in that class of family. So I had to buy DDR4 RAM, which is very expensive right now in the market. I mean, if you go look at the prices of DDR4 RAM, it's re it's horrendous. As of the time I built, I bought this uh, the RAM for this build. It was forty two dollars and ninety nine cents on Amazon in two thousand and sixteen. Right now, it is eighty seven dollars and forty nine cents for the same exact thing. No change, no better performance. It's ridiculous. It wasn't until weeks later that I went ahead and I went to be. Uh, I think it was months later I went to be at B and H here and I bought the same sticks of RAM for around the same price. So this this pricing here is probably around 80. Let's just call it eighty four dollars. So let's be realistic here. This is going to run you eighty seven times two. Uh, seven plus seven is fourteen. Eighty plus eighty is one sixty plus fourteen. That's one hundred and seventy four dollars. So one seventy four. Let's ignore the cents here. So it's going to run you about here to be able to get the DDR4 16 gigs of RAM. So let me upgrade that for you. Now you can run eight gigs and a PC like this. I know is going to play the division two. Um, let's not worry about that right now, because usually they'll optimize games to be able to run on different PC requirements. A PC like this is built to be able to play future games. I, I, I have this build the way it is because I want to be able to play games like Cyberpunk when it comes out. When that game comes out on PC, it's I think it's going to be a demanding game. CG Project Red PC titles are demanding and then um, hard drive. Uh, Western Digital one terabyte hard drive. I bought one from somebody used. And I, I bought it with another graphics card, so it equated to about forty dollars. Power supply EVGA bronze. I paid ten bucks for it. It's about forty. It's about forty dollars right now. Now I've bought a brand new one of this, and I paid thirty five dollars for a brand new one as of the time I bought it. But I wanted to show you that just on it was just randomly that he listed it on Facebook and said he wanted I think ten dollars for it, and I was like, yeah, give it to me. I don't know if I even need it, but it's one of those things where you can actually run into good deals and you can pay. This is a fourth of the price of a brand new one. And right now, as I speak to you, it is powering this PC that I'm running. So another thing is you have is your comfort level. Are you willing to take risks on, you know, parts that, you know, may not function too? That's another thing you have to look at. I mean, I'm saying, yeah, buy used components in some instances, but you have to also look at the possibility. What if it doesn't work? Well, a $10, $10 risk from, you know, I don't think that's actually a huge risk. So if you find somebody selling a power supply in like your Craigslist or your local Facebook, make sure you go with somebody, by the way, take somebody with you. If you're an American, you know, find somebody that, you know, has a concealed carry permit and some self-defense, you know, you know, training or someone that's just going to look out for you and be in a public place. That's how you buy. Don't go to somebody's house. I will never go to somebody's house to pick up anything on Craigslist or Facebook. That's not even going to happen. If, if they can't meet me in a public place, then that's not it's not worth buying. I'll, I'll leave it that way. <laughs> this is a safety concern. So be safe and be smart. Don't go to people's houses that you don't know. That's period. That's just my disclaimer here. This case, I bought it. Um, Deep Cool Tesseract. I got this from B and H right now. It's thirty seven dollars. And then a mouse uh, I got on Amazon right now. It's actually 13 bucks. It's it's a few cents less. And then this mouse, I bought it at Walmart. It was on sale. The box was all crumpy and I picked it up. I think I bought it less than 30 bucks. I think I averaged it at 30 bucks because I can't remember the price right now. So I went a little high, but right now it's twenty five dollars and I think it's twenty five dollars on eBay. So let me fill this out with the eBay blue. And then this monitor. I bought it for $130 from somebody too. And right now on eBay, it is 134 bucks. So the price to build a computer like this today, buying all the components. Oh yeah. My GPU. I didn't talk about my GPU. This is a big deal. Now this absolutely reduced the price of my build by almost $200, if not $200 at least, um, 877. Yep to 1077. So two hundred dollars and change. I was going to do the delta here, but I couldn't find the formula to see the difference. But you can do the math and figure it out. And so if you look, one of the big things that actually added to that decrease in price is the cost of my RAM and of course the cost of my GPU. I bought this GPU in a hand to hand sale from somebody who wanted to sell their GPU um, on Facebook because they had upgraded. So I was able to save all this money 
and once i saw it on you, you once you're looking at the prices you're able to recognize a deal immediately you see it so one of the things i'll encourage you is don't go out and go buy all this stuff unless you have the money now if you have the money oh by all means use my amazon link at the bottom of the description and you know i'll get I'll get a decent, you know, incentive if you use my Amazon link to purchase these items on Amazon. But this is a this is a video that's what I want to be practical. Now, this build is a build that I've put together over a year and a half. I've been buying these components one by one. And that's the idea of me doing this video now because the division game doesn't come out till about nine months. So if you were to say in, in America, you put some prices, you, you put some prices in play or it depends on where you are. You look at these prices and it's something that's around this price and you really want to go into gaming. You can build a computer like this for yourself. You can start saving maybe a hundred dollars every month. And by the time the division two game comes out, most of these prices, you can always tell and say, OK, this is the, the current price right now. Well, what does a sale or what does a deal really do really look like? Because sometimes they'll advertise a sale and the sale is just giving you pretty much the, re the regular price. So also you that's another thing you want to know. So this spreadsheet, I think, is going to give you a guide. It's also in the link below for you to download and it will show you kind of some of the realistic prices. Also, like my, you know, my processor, Intel went ahead and made a whole bunch of processors after the Ryzen came out. So my processor pretty much is in a weird place. If I were to sell this processor today, I'll sell it for 150 bucks. That's why I'm still hanging on to it because I thought about upgrading it to an i7. But then I was like, if I sell, I'll sell for a loss to then add money and then buy an i7. So I left it the way it was and I've been using it ever since. So these are components to look for in the next video. I want to do a, a multiple part series. We're going to actually browse the Internet and then we're going to go shopping. We're going to get an Amazon. We're going to get an eBay. We're going to look at prices and then we're going to make an alternative build and I'm going to update this spreadsheet and I'm going to have an alternative build that actually has similar performance with this with this particular computer and something that you can get for much less. So don't be afraid of this eight hundred dollar price tag or this one thousand dollar price tag. I'm going to find I'm going to show you how to actually cut down this uh, amount of money. Uh, cut it down by some percentage in the next video. So thanks for listening and watching. I appreciate your time and your audience. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And I guess I'll see you in a part two. Peace.